Okay, time for chapter 13. Um, the chapter that will probably involve me save scumming some uh, certifications. Part 2 Crimson Flower Ethereal Moon Beyond Escape It is Imperial Year 1185. Half a decade has passed since Emperor Edelgard ascended the Imperial throne, yet the continent of Fodland still remains lost in a tempest of turmoil and bloodshed. In the Holy Kingdom of Fargus, King Dimitri has welcomed Archbishop Rhea and her knights, who were driven out of Garagmach to the Kingdom capital. As they work to build a unified front, the war with the Empire rages on to the west. Meanwhile, Claude, leader of the Alliance, staves off Imperial intervention by strategically stirring up conflicts between Lester Lords in an effort to feign neutrality. As events unfold, Edelgard and her Black Eagle Strike Force begin to take action in an attempt to break the war's current state of deadlock. You. How long do you intend to sleep? Your body is awake. Your eyes must open now. And you must find the strength to stand upon those legs of yours. Like so much rain, a pool of blood has fallen to the ground. As spears and arrows pierce the earth, it weeps. And even now, it weeps. In order to survive, they kill. And so, the people of this world are lost in an abyss of suffering. They weep as well. The only one who truly knows the nature of such things is I. Or rather, you. Excuse me? Are you saying you have forgotten who I am? How dare you? Get on your feet. Right now! I'll coddle you no more! You are just like a child, always needing me to hold your hand. Hey, are, are you awake? We're in a village at the base of the monastery. What are you doing in a place like this? I honestly didn't expect to find someone floating away down the river. Garrick Mach is upstream of here, but that place was abandoned. Huh? You don't know? The Church of Saros isn't there anymore. Though, there have been some folks still living there in the five years since... Well, you know. Regardless, the Imperial Army has taken over now. Um, are you feeling alright? You didn't hit your head or anything, did you? It's the ethereal moon of the year 1185. It's been nearly five years since the monastery fell. Tomorrow was supposed to be the Millennium Festival, but who's got time to think about things like that? Uh, yeah, that's what I said. But with the war and the Archbishop still missing at all, I doubt there's a soul to be found who has enough blessings worth counting. Hey, slow down, will ya? Where do you think you're going? Are you crazy? The Imperial Army is there. Come on, I, I promise I won't say you're a coward. Just forget about going anywhere near the monastery. You just remember I tried to stop you, got it? It's not on my conscience if you wind up dead. Unbelievable. Five years ago to the day. If things had continued on as they were, today would have been the Millennium Festival. Halt! Who's there? It can't be. Professor? Is it really you? But I searched everywhere and never found a trace. My teacher. 
What have you been doing all this time? Where have you been? Joking? At a time like this? You do realize it's been five years since you disappeared. Do you have any idea how guilty I felt? How broken my heart was? I searched high and low after you vanished. Although there was no proof, I somehow knew you were alive. All this time, I led everyone as best I could and fought with all my heart. It's been a difficult path to walk alone. <sighs> Welcome back, my teacher. I'm so happy that you're safe. Five years. Such a short time, but it feels like an eternity ago. Do you still feel the way you did all those years ago? You said then that you would fight at my side no matter how many enemies we should amass. As for me, my resolve has not faltered. I'm determined as ever to see this through to the end. I will defeat the False Goddess. I will save this world from those creatures and give humanity its freedom back. So, my teacher, are you prepared to stand with me? I... I thank you. Truly. Now then, I assume you understand the situation at hand, yes? Another joke? Or... Are you telling the truth? I suppose you must be. In that case, I'll tell you all that has transpired as you slumbered these past five years. And that is where we are now. The war is at a stalemate. Dimitri is the new king of Fargus. It's clear that his territory will continue to support the church. Meanwhile, Claude's leadership has thrown the Alliance into chaos. He maintains neutrality in their internal conflict. The situation has created a deadlock. We've been awaiting an opportunity for our squadron to return to the monastery. With you in the fray, I believe the state of the war will shift immediately. The Church, as well as the Kingdom and the Alliance. The time has come to eliminate them all. Although we were of different houses, we were companions who lived and learned together. Some of our ranks are hesitant to battle against them, and against the people of their homelands. However, knowing that you're alive is sure to raise their spirits. Good. Well then, I believe it's time for a little reunion. The Black Eagle Strike Force never lost faith. They knew you were alive and have been awaiting your return. Let's not keep them waiting any longer. Well now, that face is certainly familiar. I am glad to see you alive and well, Professor. Professor! It's me, Bernie! Do you remember me? I can't believe you're here! I can't believe it! Is this a dream? Can we really be this lucky? This is not dreaming. Our Professor is with us again. Welcome to the back. I mean, welcome back. Our group isn't the same without you. I am overjoyed to see you again. It's been so long. Seeing you again fills my heart with hope. Great. Now everything will be easy. Um, that's great you're safe, Professor. I'm deeply, deeply moved. Quite the reunion, isn't it, Professor? Everyone's happy to see you. Come on, Edelgard. You must be happier than all of us combined. She took it really hard when you disappeared, Professor. Of course, we did our very best in your absence. And there was never a day that we doubted you would return to us. Edelgard has been leading us as Emperor. But after you disappeared, it became apparent that you were her anchor. It gives me regret to be admitting this, but... Our power is not enough. 
The only one who can be meeting Edelgard's expectations is you, Professor. Most impressive of all is your uncanny ability to bring a smile to everyone's face. In the years since you vanished, we have not lost anyone from our ranks. We all longed for your presence and your leadership, myself included. It seems fitting to view this as a new beginning for the Black Eagle Strike Force. We already have our target. Yes, we must eliminate the Alliance before moving on to fight the Kingdom and the Church. However, that doesn't necessarily mean we must occupy the entirety of the Alliance. House Regan stands against the Empire. Therefore, our target is Deirdre, the aquatic capital. We must cross the Aramid River, which separates the Empire and the Alliance. To do that, we must take the largest bridge across it. The Great Bridge of Murden. Murden connects the monastery and the Imperial capital to the east. It is the shortest route there. An Alliance stronghold has been built at the Great Bridge. We'll take that and then head north. At the same time, we must defeat the one who defends it, Judith von Daphne. If we can also take control of Daphne territory, it would be greatly beneficial to us. Prepare yourselves. The next battle will be a momentous one. Join me, my friends, as we begin our journey to bring peace and solace to this war-ravaged world. Woohoo. No, nah, we'll be chatting soon, though. Sure. Keep my voice down. Okay, I've got exactly one master seal, and that's pretty much all I can afford. <laughs> so let's see. She doesn't quite have it, so that doesn't surprise me. Okay, what about you? You can go for it. Can I get it? Excellent. I didn't even have to save Skonet. Let's fucking go. Yeah, War Master's pretty good. It's, um... It's basically Grappler, except instead of having a Dex Growth, it has like 15 to Strength. I honestly think it's kind of worse. Because I think you just get more bonuses, I guess, overall if you're Grappler. Because 10 Strength, Dex, and Speed I think is better than 15 Strength and 10 Speed. So once he's mastered it, I'm probably going to switch him back, honestly. But... I need quick repost, and here we have it, the best weapon in the game, right here, because Raging Storm, LOL. Good deal. Bernie. Ah, that's right, I've already... I already did that. Okay, good deal. Now maybe she can get some more strength and be useful. Yep. Uh, let me go ahead and, uh, give her stuff before I forget to do it again. The charm I will absolutely do. Uh, okay, so 36, 36, damn, 26. So Ferdinand doesn't really need any either. 31, holy shit, okay. Um, Lysithia. Lysithia is not the most charming person in the world, as it turns out. Shit, I had dual spawn, I didn't even notice. So yeah, it's potentially very useful if I ever actually start letting her get close enough to fight people. Which I probably will for fun. 
Um, yes, as you can see, you only get like the one weekend and then you go immediately into the mission. And this mission, the first time I did it, also took me for fucking ever. So uh, it was difficult. Alright. A little war attire here. Yeah, it's fine. I'm not super picky about it. Nope, we'll be talking later. And we also have Yuritsa, who's actually, I think, one of the best units in the game. And I will be using him. He comes in decently strong. He's got his little scythe here. He's got murderous intent, which is great. And he just has a lot of damn skills. Um, I'm probably going to send him back and get him, like, uh, death blow and stuff. But, yeah. It's going to be good stuff. Where are you, homeboy? There you are. Uh, yeah, he even comes in with, like, a decently high um, authority, too. So, like, he's a beast, for sure. Where the hell did he go? I can never recognize this man. Actually, don't even need to train him in axes. That's right. He comes. He like the dude just comes in with everything. It's fucking great. Uh, is there any other possible skill I could give him? I don't think so. I mean, I guess for memes, I could get him to Fortress Knight and give him Aegis or something. That'd be kind of funny. Where is he? Oh yeah, by the way, he does get Mastermind too. The dude's an absolute chad. Dex. Sure. Why not? Uh, where is something he can use for now? Gloucester Knights. Uh, it's looking like that's probably what it's going to be. That might be better, actually. Eh, one use, though. I'll take the two uses, thanks. You've survived. How very fortunate. Were you dead, I wouldn't be able to fight you. But you are very much alive. Now I have a chance to kill you. He's very friendly, as you can see. Uh, the dude is a beast, though, for more reasons than one. His growths are actually pretty ridiculous. Before Yuri was introduced to the game, he was tied with all the, the three speed ladies at 60. His strength is 50. His HP is 50. His dex is 35. So he kind of has a dex growth issue like Ingrid does. But Professor, since he kind of just comes in at like a pretty high level, he... Uh, doesn't really have the same issue completely anyway. It's also very tanky, so you can do a lot of stuff with him if you're uh, so inclined, which I probably will just because it's... why not? The dude has Mastermind. He can literally learn Master a class in like one map. Hey pal, you've got a lot of nerve coming here after ignoring us for five years. Ah, gotcha! All this time and you still can't take a joke, can you? Good job surviving and clawing your way back to us. This day couldn't get better if it tried. <laughs> Say, now that you're back, we should celebrate with some liquid gold. We're not your students anymore, so it should be fine, yeah? Oh, I like this idea. We'll make it a wild party. 
Even the Emperor won't be able to turn it down. If you haven't heard, we'll soon be launching a full-scale assault on the Alliance. Her Majesty has searched relentlessly for you. Now that you're found, her moment has come. Yes, before then, I had never known her to show such desperate resolve. The stalemate we've been locked in shall give way very abruptly. We have your reappearance to thank for that. Yeah, Elle's thirsty as fuck in this game. She wants to bang her professor. I will not let her though, because I did that once, and she has crazy eyes. And you know what they say. Huh. Is that... It is you, isn't it? I kind of forgot what you looked like. Well, I didn't mean any harm. It's just that so much has happened. It's hard to keep track, you know? Anyway, you came back, and that's what matters. Staying here wasn't a mistake. I can say that much. But this is okay. The Burt kept it safe out of the goodness of his heart. <laughs> Kidding, of course. He said the lowlifes here could be useful because they won't mind fighting dirty, or rooting out spies. Or something along those lines. I didn't pay much attention to that part. You don't know the half of it. It's all I can do to stop myself from whooping with joy. Whooping with joy, huh? Alright, well while I'm down here... Need something? Is this one? I probably won't get very much use out of this, this to be honest, but... This one? It's because there's only five chapters left, it's and only four real chapters, I would say, where I get to do, like, the usual exploring thing, so... Because, yeah, this run's super short. Woo! Come on. And now that Byleth has War Master, there really isn't anything to train him in anymore. So I don't really have to do that. Thank God. Hey! I have a favor to ask. Everybody is at half mast. That's fine. Edelgard is controlling the Empire. She is putting the pressure on the Kingdom and Alliance. Empire and religion are at open war. It will be... difficult for us at first. But corrupt nobles are many. That means the common people will rebel and be joining our side. With you, Professor, the battle tides will... Uh, will turn, I have certainty. Maybe I can find or I have your eats as lost items already. Can't remember. Yeah. All right, I'm ready to fight. Let's do this. You're right. I gotta keep it under control, or I'm gonna wear myself out too quickly. Maybe I'll just get rid of a few monsters. Or is that too risky right before a mission? He's still short. <laughs> Poor Caspar. Man, let's blow the fuck out eternally. Indeed, House Gloucester will remain staunchly neutral in this war, even if we press into Alliance territory. My father is no threat to the Empire. Lady Edelgard surely understands that. The Great Bridge of Murden, however, is another story. I hear it is held by Judith of House Daphnum. She is renowned for her military prowess. We would do well not to underestimate her. Professor. Nope. We will be talking later. Yeah, I basically don't have a whole lot to spend all these activity points on at this point, so...
I don't really care about being inefficient with support conversations. Not that I was particularly worrying about it in the first place. Later, please. <laughs> it's so nice that there's like half the amount of people to talk to. <laughs> the last five years have been difficult at times. My relationship with Edelgard is rather contentious due to the incident with my father. Nevertheless, I cannot abandon my family's duties. As Duke Iyer, I must play my part in the Imperial Army. Edelgard intends to abolish the nobility, but I know I can dissuade her from doing so. Yeah, can you? Are you sure about that? long march but it's fine i've had plenty of time to stay inside lately so i think it's time i run out yeah i can do this no more bernie bear oh yeah people call me bernie bear since i hole up in my den all the time not anymore though whatever you say bear of farley right <laughs> hey there. Ah, a new face. I am Randolph von Bergleys. I'm the guardian of this place. Wait a moment. I'm sure I've seen you somewhere before. Ah, yes. You're Her Majesty's professor. You're alive? Um, oh, this is my little sister, Fleisch. She's just a rookie, but she's helping me as my assistant. Hello, I'm Fleisch von Bergleys. It's nice to meet you. I know I'm inexperienced, but I'm gonna do my best. You can count on me to look after my big brother. I've heard you're planning to march into Alliance territory. I'll be here to guard the fort. It's nice to see Fleisch not being a psycho. Later, please. Thank you. Professor? Greetings, Professor. Nothing to report. What's that? Do I have brothers in the church? You really are well informed. My older twin works for the Knights of Saros, but I think he's just a grunt. Not a noble gatekeeper like yours truly. Unlike me, he's very devout. He left the Empire a long time ago. There's a, I hope then Hey, how about a favor? Oof, I'm poor and it hurts. Professor. It hurts. A moment, please. I probably won't even do paralogs until chapter 15 just because of how poor I am right now. I need a favor. I would just rather have the damn money. you're here, Professor. It seems we've reached a stalemate on the war front. I admit I'm feeling apprehensive about fighting the Alliance. No. I have to shelve my personal feelings. There are bigger things at play here. I'll fight with full force. I'm counting on you to lead us to victory, Professor. Ah, yeah, Claude sucks anyway. Fuck him. I have good friends in both the Alliance and Fargus, so this fighting weighs heavily on me. I can't bear the thought of battling the Knights of Saros to the death. I have to keep my chin up though, right? Let's press on together, Professor. Professor! Yep. As you may suspect, there will be a lot of supports. Alright, let's see if my five years got me any carrots. Boom, big carrot. Professor, oh my, it's so good to see you. These days, so many old friends seem to be disappearing. 
But you, you're here. It's incredible to see you again after five years. I have a feeling your name will go down in history. Did I happen to... No, I didn't. Three. Who? After the battle five years ago, the Imperial Army occupied Garrig Mach. The cathedral and several other buildings were destroyed, but... We've done some repair work here and there, and we're using the buildings as a base of operations. As for me? Well, the church moved its headquarters to Fargus, and I've seen no reason to follow. When I returned to Enbar, I received a summons from Her Majesty, and I chose to answer. Um... Run away. Hi there. Professor. Nope, we'll talk later. Thanks. Very soon later, but later. Professor. Do you know how happy I was to hear you were still alive? I'll tell you how happy. For the past two days, I haven't had my morning or my afternoon naps. Huh. Well, as long as we weren't marching. Can't sleep much then. <sighs> but it's not for want of trying. You finally joined us, have you? I attached myself to the Imperial Army as well. Seemed the thing to do. I feel I owe it to Edelgard to set my past feelings about the Empire aside. I am happy to help her. It's strange, isn't it? After five years, the three professors are together once more. I am most curious, though. You say you were asleep for five whole years. Incredible. Yeah. He's tall. Perhaps this is another effect of your crest. I do look forward to investigating you in greater detail. Wonderful news. I am most excited to begin. We must find the time, of course. Hello. Ah, this took less than 15 minutes. It feels good. Allow me to brief you on the details of our situation. The Empire firmly controls the western portion of Fargus. However, the central and eastern regions continue to put up heavy resistance. The strongholds in these regions are Aryan Road, the fortress city, and Ferdiad, the kingdom capital. We cannot control Fargus until we have taken both of these cities. As for the Alliance, Houses Gloucester and Ordelia seem predisposed to capitulate to us. However, due to interference from Houses Regan and Goneril, we have yet to secure their cooperation. Claude obviously hopes to keep the Alliance whole through diplomacy. But because we have had to focus our efforts against the Church until now, our forces have yet to meet his. We have only recently begun to take the fight to Alliance territory. I have a request for you. Sure. Oh, I could have sworn I saw a glowy. Professor, I'm sorry to have dragged you into the fight again so soon after our reunion, but you appeared at a most opportune time. I'm truly humbled by your support, my teacher. Thank you. You may be worried, but you shouldn't be. You always manage to pull through. <laughs> Make sure you're ready to head out, okay? Hmm. I will say, I'm pretty sure if I wasn't doing this explore just to talk to everybody, I would probably just do a bunch of battles on this week if I was uh, being a real tryhard about it. Okay, so. 
I have a shitload of these. Yuritsa has supports with these four. I'm honestly surprised they didn't give him any with Edelgard. Oh well. The food here is simple, but come again? I've never heard a nobleman. I see your food preferences are the same as they ever were. You haven't changed at all either. Liking that greatly. Ah, uh, I can eat. Who's left? Who's left? Oh, I love this meal. How did you know? Eating. You're welcome. This is my favorite. I Ooh. Mm, suggest Hubert, huh? Fucking Hubert. I don't like to eat that food. While I have little interest. Constance seemed way too excited about that. Okay, so I'm gonna make a little money here. Honestly, L would probably kill it, but I'm sure Patrick can manage. Not for myself, for every. Oh, okay. I, fight for I guess she's just gonna truck everything, that's fine. I fight for justice's name. Kick his ass. Yeah. God, do I need that money, though? Need to outfit your Eatsa with shit too. Uh. I'll steal Ferdinand's Silver Lance. Be able to uh, better afford that man later, I think. There's no real point in doing a sauna, so I'm not going to bother with that. Oh, Yuritsa! Let's cook! Uh, Dex. Why not? I have no experience cooking. That does not surprise me at all. I can't bear watching. Give me that. Of course. 
We're gonna be besties. Okay, he's the first one just standing outside your room too. Fucking weirdo. Oh, you've survived. Were you? Um, do I have any of his stuff? I doubt it. I don't think so. I don't think any of his stuff starts dropping yet. I just give him stuff. I'll I'll what are his uh light gifts? He likes roses, huh? My. My. Deal. Hey, welcome. You have a good eye. A pleasure to come again. Uh, as money I can ill afford. I mean, actually, I probably should have just said yes, because I'm literally about to start doing them. Uh, I don't even think I can afford to buy all that fishing bait. Hello there. I want to at least buy yes. this. I think this one, yes? I think. Is there a way for me to make money? Oh, I should have some. Yeah, I have this some golden one, yes. fish. That's right. I think. <laughs> this one, yes. I th this one, yes. I think this one, yes. I think. Return okay, soon, I please. did it. Supports. Ugh, I'm so sick of it all. There is so much to be done, yet all I encounter are new problems and pitfalls. Ugh. Sometimes I wish I could spend just one day doing absolutely nothing and gorging myself on sweets. Do you mean it? Just the thought makes me happy. But Hubert would never allow it. Indeed. It may not be possible now, but one day we will know the joys of idling. Mark my words. Is that a smirk I spy? Is it so amusing to you, me daydreaming of free time? I see. I'm finally getting an idea of what you think of me. But let's put all that aside for now. There is something I've been meaning to tell you. I'm afraid this might sound a bit... sentimental. However... I want to thank you. Because of you, I feel I can walk my faded path without losing myself. If I were alone, I might have lost perspective and become a harsh leader with a heart of ice. But I'm not alone. With you by my side, I'm somehow free to be not only a leader, but simply Edelgard. Until now, no one has been able to surpass me, much less command me. I have always been seen as an untouchable princess or emperor. No one spoke to me as an equal or met my gaze without flinching. It was lonely, terribly lonely. The only person I could rely on as I tried to claw my way out of the darkness was myself. But you, you have been a brilliant light. Somehow you have chased the darkness away. And for that, I will always be grateful. Nice place, isn't it, Professor? Standing here, you can almost feel the goddess's absence. Discounting what dwells within you, of course. 
Do you think some punishment would rain down from the sky if this monastery were to be destroyed? Of course not. Even if the so-called Immaculate One came back here for revenge, that would only be a result of this war, not the work of a deity. If it is between love and hate, then I would choose the latter. The Goddess failed to properly govern this world. That is why it is necessary for Lady Edelgard to become the supreme leader of Fodlan. Those with power must use it wisely. Is that not a teaching of the Church of Saros? It's absurd to preach to others what you cannot practice yourself. Yes. It is our humanity that pushes us to step up and take the lead should the need arise. That is not the case for inhuman creatures with lifespans well beyond our own. We must fight to preserve what makes us human. You are the one closest to the enemy. I wonder if you will be able to maintain your humanity to the end. You make it sound easy. I find myself trusting you. Even with my life. <laughs> I've already dedicated my life to Lady Edelgard. To throw my lot in with you is inconceivable. But... If I had two lives to give, I might devote one of them to you. Not as master and servant, but as equal partners. <laughs> Take that! <laughs> Yes, I am in a hurry. Edelgard claims victory after victory. She never stops. Five years ago, she ascended the throne and swept away the corrupt nobles, my father included. I always thought I would be the one to unseat him, but she did it instead, with all the ease and indifference of someone cracking an egg. Now, as the head of House Iyer, I serve Edelgard. I have to accept that I am her subordinate, working beneath her to reunify Fodlan. The disparity between Edelgard and myself is... obvious. She never stops moving forward, single-minded, never wavering. But where does that leave me? Here, flailing about, going nowhere, contributing nothing. But it is! That is the reality! Not once since our days at the Academy, have I exceeded Edelgard's abilities? I saw her as a worthy opponent. She did not even see me as a contender. She did not even consider me at all. As the head of the Noble House Iyer, I must be able to achieve results. But all my efforts have come to nothing. Results are everything. I have not shown results. So I will be stagnating here forever. I appreciate that, but it is not enough to persuade me. I know that I have a massive wall to climb, and I must climb it alone. Even so, may I ask a favor? <laughs> Professor, please keep an eye on my progress. I would appreciate if you were always by my side, bearing witness to my accomplishments. Hey, Professor, something's been bothering me. Remember that suspicious guy I chased after back when I was a student? A knight scolded me for it, but at the time I really thought I was doing the right thing. Now that I've had more experience on the battlefield, though... I've been looking for you. There isn't much time, so I'll keep this brief. The knights encountered a band of brigands while out marching. It was hard fought, but we prevailed. Our soldiers are highly trained, but the enemy was formidable and we weren't expecting combat. There were a number of casualties among our troops.
There is something I wanted to bring to your attention. The brigands all bore identical tattoos of a scorpion on their arms. Please, keep an eye out for that mark in the future. Oh no. Don't mention it. If you'll excuse me, I need to get back to my duties. <laughs> Heck of a coincidence, right? As soon as I mention that suspicious guy, this happens. But some of the knights died in combat. They died because of what I did five years ago. This is my fault. If I'd stayed quiet and tracked the guy down like you said, we would have stopped those brigands sooner, and I wouldn't have blood on my hands. But he probably wouldn't have. Now those knights, they're not coming back. We both know it. This is all my fault. <laughs> I can't believe how long it's been since I left home. Since I was dragged out of the house, I mean. Five whole years. It's weird to think about. At first, I remember I was desperate to go back, but now it's the opposite. I have friends here, and I have you. The monastery's become a second home to me. Back then, I never would have dreamed a day like this would come. It's all thanks to you. You've given me a second chance at life. If not for you, I never would have gotten used to leaving my room, let alone the monastery. Maybe the battlefields just dulled my senses. I'm much better with strangers and new places now, though. I don't panic nearly as much as before. A new place? All on my own? That sounds like a tough assignment. Where did this come from all of a sudden? Hey, hold on. You're teasing me, aren't you? Please don't joke around like that anymore. It's torture for me. You're still not taking me seriously. I mean it. Promise me you won't do that again. Friends respect each other's feelings, don't they? Good. I'll hold you to that. You're absolutely not allowed to send me out anywhere on my own. Got it? You would need to come with me. If you're with me, I can go anywhere in the world. No! That defeats the purpose! Why can't you get what I'm saying? I thought we were finally getting close. Guess I'm not good enough for that, though, am I? I'll let you have this one, but you better be ready for next time. <laughs> Professor, please do not be concerned. I just did too much overworking and lost my strength. Yes, I have no problems, except my apology for giving you worry. I have sorrow, uh, I mean, I am sorry to be fainting at a time like this. Even though I was not asking for your care and attention, you gave it willingly. I am thinking that is incorrect. Will you have a listen to me? There is something that I must be saying. I am thinking you already have knowledge of why I came to Fodlin. Not for studying, but as a hostage for the Empire. So that Bridget would not be rebelling anymore. It feels like... a knife against my throat. That I am making my grandfather obey the Empire. Because I am a hostage, it is not an option to be giving up. I must be fighting, and winning, and staying alive. I must do anything to be making life better for Bridget. To be making Bridget and the Empire stand as equals. That is what my people are wanting from me. And what my grandfather, the King of Bridget, is wanting. Um, 
my wand. I... I am not knowing of that. The wants of my people are something I have power to achieve. Their wants are my own. What I really want... I have understanding. Wait, no, I... I actually do not have understanding. Yet. What I am understanding is that there is something I am not understanding. When I know what my true want is, I give you my promise that I will be telling you first. Do you have a moment, Professor? I need to speak with you. Thank you so much. This is what I wanted to address. This letter from my adoptive father just arrived. Oh, have I not mentioned him? He's the reason I first came to the Officer's Academy. He's also the one who dragged me from the church where I was living, just so he could use my crest. My crest does not yet belong to a house, so he plans to use it as leverage to marry into the nobility. He's a very greedy man who was a roving merchant before adopting me, but now he's in the capital. This letter says that he's finally arranged to marry me off to a wealthy noble. <sighs> I know he's just thinking of himself, but can't he see that this isn't a priority when we're at war? I don't know what to do about this proposal. I can't see any way around it, so I fear that I must. I just don't want to let go of the life that I've made for myself. I know it's not what my heart wants, but I don't have the strength to say no. I believe I've mentioned this before, but I want to work in service of the church. Well, I suppose it doesn't necessarily have to be the church, but I want to help those in need. If I were to marry a noble, I think it would be difficult to realize that dream. It's just... I've always allowed myself to follow the whims of those above me. I convinced myself that everything in life was at the will of the goddess. I was blind to reality. I believed it was her will to both pull me from the church and guide me to the officer's academy. The decision to enter this war was the first time I acted of my own free will. My adoptive father opposed this decision, but I somehow managed to convince him. Still, I couldn't free myself of him completely. This letter is proof of that. It's not that I'm scared of him, but there is something that worries me. Ah, I knew you'd understand, Professor. I've sat down to write a reply several times, but I can't muster up the courage or the words. I was hoping you could provide me with the encouragement I need. That's a very good point. We're only given one life, so we must do all we can to pursue our happiness. Okay. I think that may have been just the push I was looking for. I'll tell him the truth. That I found a life worth pursuing, and I must decline the proposal. Maybe I should tell him I've fallen for someone else. <laughs> Why, it's you, Professor. Isn't that obvious? <laughs> I'm just teasing. Now I'm off to write this letter and stand my ground. Thank you for your encouragement. <sighs> Thank you for helping me with my training again today, Professor. I'm gonna keep at it for a while longer. So you go on ahead. 
I can't. Not when I'm right on the cusp of using my power to greater potential. Surely you yourself are tired. Just don't worry about me, okay? I'm sorry, Professor. It was careless of me to continue, despite how fatigued I clearly was. I probably should have listened to you. Now I've made a mess of things. I can't help but feel the need to rush in all things constantly. You get that way when you realize you haven't got much time. Eighteen years ago, House Ordelia was involved in a civil conflict within the Empire. All we did was respond to a call for aid. We weren't involved politically. But once the rebellion was crushed, my family was held responsible for the aid we gave, and the Empire gained some sway over us as a result. At the time, the noble houses of the Alliance took a passive stance. No one lent aid to my family. As a result, some key officials within the family were killed, and people from the Empire were sent to replace them. Among those people were some mysterious mages. They were unsettling in a word. Skin pale as death. One after another, they captured and imprisoned the children of our household. They began performing terrible rituals on the children. Though it's probably more accurate to call them experiments. With the Empire monitoring our every move, my parents could do nothing but watch in horror as all of this unfolded. One after another, the children died. Till the only one left was me. You know, my hair wasn't always this color. During their experiments, they'd been doing things with my blood. One morning, I awoke like this. A shock of white hair, all trace of pigment, gone. Upon seeing me, the mages were delighted. They realized that their experiments had finally succeeded. Sure enough, they ran a test and saw that two crests coexisted within me. Losing pigment from my hair wasn't the only loss. The mages informed me that my lifespan was now greatly shortened. Five more years at most, perhaps less. Shortly thereafter, the mages lost interest in me, and we never saw them in the Ordelia household again. Since all that, our family has been in decline. It's challenging now even to govern our territory. After all my mother and father have suffered, I at least want them to have peace as they grow older. That is all I wish for, but I haven't much time to ensure it comes to pass. It's not like what's been done to me can be undone. Professor. The only way I can conceive of would be to remove my crest somehow. But I don't know if that's even remotely possible. Even if it were, I wouldn't be of much use to you and the others without my crest. You sound resolved. I'll allow your resolve to bolster my own. Thank you, Professor. What's the matter? Not hungry? I am partaking in some sweet delights. Is there a problem? Yes. I am a person too. What I eat is nobody's business but my own. If you need something, spit it out. My ice cream is melting. Perhaps after I finish devouring this treat. <sighs> I am. And I am not. 
at the moment, I am Yuritsa von Hrim. The Emperor and the army know me only as the Death Knight, but he is merely an illusion. A demon who resides in my heart. He is not me. Not who I am at my core. He thrives and feasts upon blood. Death. Suffering. So while I sit here eating, I prefer to just be myself. Yuritsa, I would like to be who I truly am. <sighs> I am incapable of enjoying my dessert with you gawking at me like that. I have no further words for you. Go. Standing tall, I see. Guard, hello. What do you think of this horse? An equine marvel, no? Look how intelligent he is. You can see it in his face. Certainly much smarter than your horse. Oh, what a lovely bloom. Behold, Edelgard. Do you see this blood red bloom? This is much more impressive than the pale little sprigs you have there. And, as I'm sure you know, redness symbolizes courage and strength. Ferdinand, stop. I can't believe you're wasting my time with a petty one-sided rivalry. What are you complaining about? You told me not to publish my pamphlet, and I complied. I've had enough of your foolish antics. Very well. I will grant you the duel you so desperately desire. But, when I win, you must forfeit the right to bother me with your ridiculousness. Forever! Do we have a deal? Ah, so you'll fight me after all? Wonderful! To battle, then! All right, Edelgard. Have at me! As you wish. Ha! It only took you one blow? How? I can't afford to hold back against an opponent like you. I led with my fastest, strongest strike. Fastest and strongest? <laughs> You're just flattering me. I have been defeated. Utterly. I cannot believe I was foolish enough to challenge such a plainly superior opponent. The difference in our skill level is not so great as all that. If you had taken the first strike, you might have won. That's why I didn't give you the chance. I do not think talent is what separates us so much as readiness. I had not the faintest idea of what to expect from a real duel. I was playing, but you were not. That such an ill-prepared noble would think to challenge you? It is laughable. Ferdinand... Gardening with you is a lot of fun, Lady Edelgard. I feel the same. You know so much about it, Bernadetta. I looked after flowers a lot back home. I like them. They don't talk, they don't get angry, they don't hit you. And they're sweet. They are sweet. Unlike people, they can all be trusted on sight. You're sweet too, Lady Edelgard. I mean, not sweet, but, um, you know what I mean. You can talk or... You can get angry all you want. Well, I'll strive to avoid getting angry. You're really kind. I'm less scared of you than I used to be. Most nobles are terrifying. I've had lots of bad experiences with them. But getting the chance to talk to you like this makes me glad I came to the monastery. I'm glad too. You made quite a few friends at the academy, didn't you? I had heard rumors about the reclusive daughter of House Varley, but you're nothing like I imagined. Rumors? About me? Uh, uh, just pretend you didn't hear anything. <laughs> There's no need to be embarrassed. Rumors are meaningless. All that matters is the truth. You're right. I'm not really a recluse now anyway. 
Not since I came to the monastery. I won't let the rumors bother me. I'm happy to hear it. Actually, I should thank you. Thank me? What for? Wait, do you mean you need to thank me for all the times I've made you mad? You do, don't you? That mind of yours, no, I mean the grateful sort of thanks. Before I met you, I was more prone to anger, but now I've changed in that regard. So, thank you for that. Oh, I suppose you're not listening. Oh, I'm done for! Five years worth of resentment is about to crash down on me all at once! Ah! It's okay, Bernadetta. I'm thanking you, not attacking you. Oh, um... I jumped to conclusions again, didn't I? You did, yes. But don't worry about it. Enough talk, don't you think? Let's take care of these sweet little plants. Right. Okay. Thank you. Bernadetta, I hope you'll keep spending time with me. Of course I will. Hey, look. This flower's just about ready to bloom. <laughs> so it is. I can't wait to see its true colors. I have been watching you in secrecy, Edelgard. But you and Hubert were noticing me, correct? Well, if you intend to shadow us like that, you can be sure it won't escape our notice. Hubert was primed and ready to... remove you. I ordered him to stand down. You have my thanks. I have been making a decision that I am wanting to learn from you. I was thinking it was enough to be shooting one bird with one arrow. But after speaking with you, I trained with hardness. Now I can be shooting two birds with one arrow. Two pheasants? Are you implying that... Yes, a single arrow. That's astounding, Petra. Hmm. It's perhaps a bit late to explain now, but what I was getting at earlier was actually... <laughs> I am having a joke. You... come again? I really was shooting these birds with one arrow, but my joke is that I did have understanding about what you told me. I took it to my heart. Did you now? You are a person with great bluntness. I am admiring of you. As an emperor, a commander, a warrior, and a friend, you are excelling at all that you do. All of the Empire is resting on... on your shoulders, and that is including Brigid, too. I will not be falling behind you. I will be carrying Brigid on my shoulders, too. And one day, you and I will be facing each other, and we will be shaking hands. <sighs> <laughs> Yes, that much is certain. I can see that you no longer need me to look out for you. You and I are much the same. We dutifully shoulder our burdens and stand tall no matter what. It would be foolish of me to deny it. Your words give me great joy. And it also gave me joy to see you being flustered when I was showing you the birds. A cheap trick to be sure, but inarguably funny. To think that you went to all the trouble of shooting two pheasants at once for the sake of a joke. <laughs> well played, Petra. We both are growing every day. I hope we will keep doing so. Edelgard, do you have a minute? You want to speak with me? How unusual. Please, come in. I'll prepare some tea for us. Have a seat. Would you care for some cake? Yes, please. I never say no to sweets. They're from Enbar. A bit too sweet for my own liking. Isn't that the whole point of cake? Well, more for me. Mm, these are fantastic with this tea. <laughs> True. Well, there's no shortage of them. Help yourself to as many as you like. Now then, you wish to speak with me? Mm, mm. So, I, uh, can tell you know a fair bit about me. Mm, mm. <laughs> Maybe this can wait until you've finished eating? Mm. 
Edelgard, you know a fair bit about me, don't you? What in particular? For example, the fact that I have two crests. Oh? That's hard to believe. No need to play coy with me. It won't work. It's clear my body has succumbed to the intense pressure of bearing two crests. Due to the immense requirements of bearing these crests, my life expectancy is painfully short. You know all of this, right? Actually, this is the first I'm hearing of it. How would I know unless you told me? Still won't drop the act, huh? Despite how obvious you've been with your concern about my health, you're certainly consistent. I'm not really in the mood for these games. Given your rank, you certainly have access to all kinds of information that others do not. Clearly, you'd have heard all about me. Either way, I know now since you just told me. About your two crests, your physical weakness, and your short life expectancy. However, according to the principles of crest research, it's impossible to bear two crests. Unless... You've undergone a blood reconstruction surgery. Is that the case, Lysithia? Correct. It wasn't as though I had a say in any of this. I see. So you've lived through that relentless terror and agony, and survived. You speak of all of this as though you understand it on a personal level. Edelgard, have you...? You're a good friend, Lysithia, and a valuable member of this army. So I won't have you overexerting yourself. I don't want to lose you. Understand? I understand. <laughs> Good girl. Oh, and if you like those cakes, why not take some with you for later? There's no need to pander to me. But, yes, I'll take those. Thanks. <laughs> Show them this letter. Threaten them. Do what you must. Now go. Yes, sir. Hubert, that letter... Is that what I think it was? I suppose there's no denying it. But Edelgard... Explicitly forbade me to send it. Yes. I know. I cannot believe it! You disobeyed a direct order? I thought you were her loyal aide. Unwaveringly. All that I do, I do for her. I seem to recall you expressing a similar sentiment. It is our role to guide her when she is on the wrong course of action. Is that not what you said? You are not supposed to do it in secret. When you disagree with your leader, you must voice your concerns directly. Otherwise, what is the point? The point is the same. Lady Edelgard's best interests are served whether she knows it or not. She needs not trouble herself with the mundane details of my actions. Only results matter. You are sorely misguided. When I believe that Edelgard is making a mistake, I tell her as much. Through discussing the matter, I sometimes find that I was mistaken. To skip that process, to make a decision that is not yours to make, Perhaps your advice is simply useless, then. Excuse me? Listen to yourself. If I do as Lady Edelgard requires, then you tell me to be more independent. But if I tread my own path, I am misguided. I suppose the fault is mine for expecting any useful advice to come out of your mouth. <laughs> Ugh, I have had enough of your grousing. To think, I started to believe you were a useful aid. Hey there, Hubie. I've been thinking about our conversation the other day, and I've just got to know, do you really love Aidy? If it's one or the other, I suppose it would be closer to love than to hate. Why? Ah, uh, I knew it! That's why you work so hard for Aidy. Oh, Hubie, I finally get you. You're just another servant suffering from unrequited love for their mistress. <laughs> you completely misunderstand. Unrequited love. 
Do I really look like the kind of drooling simpleton to have that kind of motivation? I'd like to say yes, but I know you just argue. Fine, Hubie. Tell me your situation. My situation is simple. I am walking a path. Oh, do go on. Everyone has a path in life. Lady Edelgard has shown me mine. It is just beside her own. So we walk together side by side. We stride ever forward, yielding to nothing and to no one. So... you're sharing the same dream? <laughs> Bluntly, yes. But it's more than just a shared dream. I have many feelings toward Lady Edelgard. Gratitude, respect, awe, empathy, trust, hope. Okay. I was teasing you, but I gotta say I'm just a little bit jealous of you and Aidy. That you're able to embrace these feelings and stride forward along the same path. You're lucky, Hubie. I don't know if I'll ever get the chance to experience anything so utterly... operatic. Why not? Because I figure the best quality in a partner would be that they make me happy. And loving another is really about wanting to be loved. I'm pretty sure that's different from how things are with you and Aidy. Ah, even with the fires of war raging all around us, tea never fails to soothe the soul. Do you not agree, Bernadetta? Um, I hadn't actually thought about it, but yes. Excellent. Oh, that reminds me. Hmm? What's that? A long time ago, my parents were in talks to arrange my marriage with a certain young lady. She never set foot outside of her room, and she made little dolls to curse her perceived enemies. Such were the rumors. Frightened, I dissuaded my parents from going through with their plans. I can see that. She does sound pretty frightening. I relate to the staying in the room part, though. That girl was you, Bernadetta. A daughter of House Varley. What? I don't make dolls to curse people. You are a skilled embroiderer, no? I guess I was wrong. You were not making dolls. I did make dolls, but cute ones. Nice little carnivorous plants and things. Ah, hmm. Maybe I should not have brought this up. Why not? Carnivorous plants are adorable. Uh huh. Yes, adorable. Anyway, if I had actually known you, I would have accepted the proposal. Um, why? Did you have some scheme in mind? No, I just mean, now that I have gotten to know you, I would have been happy to... So, you're saying you... with me? <laughs> uh, it's getting kinda hot in here, isn't it? Maybe, um, maybe it's the tea. Why are you getting so worked up? That was all a long time ago now. A long time ago? Yes. Now we are soldiers fighting together in the same great conflict, right? And my parents are gone. So any agreements they might have cooked up would be completely invalid. I guess so. Just think. If we had been married, we would not have been able to build such a deep friendship. That's true. Yeah. We never would have gotten this close. I would have given up on the relationship my parents chose for me and shut myself away even more. So all in all, I am glad I refused to marry that doll-cursing princess. Hey! I said I never made curse dolls! <laughs> sorry, sorry. I am just glad to have met you at the monastery. I had better take my leave. We should have tea together again sometime soon. Yeah, um, see you. I'm glad we met here, too. <laughs> Ferdinand. Huh? Ah, Petra. 
Is there something I can help you with? No, I am not needing help. I was just thinking that you look... lonely. Lonely? In wartime? Hardly. I am too busy trying to survive to feel lonely. But once we have survived, what will you do with yourself, Petra? Return to your home? Edelgard said she would like you to ascend the throne in Bridget, to ensure good relations between the nations. Yes. My plan is to be returning home. But if Bridget and Fodlin can be friendly, I will be able to have visits whenever I choose. Maybe it is even possible for me to be living in Fodlin. Live in Fodlin? Do you not want to go back to your homeland? I do have the hope of returning one day, but Fodlin is also like a homeland to me now. I came to Fodlin nine years ago. I have been living half of my life here. My family is living in Bridget, but in Fodlin, I have new family and new friends. New family? I am glad to hear you feel that way about us, Petra. In that case, we will have to make sure that none of us die. We do not want to lose anyone in the family. Yes, we will be winning, and you will not be dying. Ha! <laughs> do not worry. I do not intend to die. I have some things to do when the war is over. Things? Yes. You and I can be the link between Fodlin and Bridget. Oh. Okay, I have to confess. I fibbed a little. About not being lonely. When this war ends, I will be quite lonely indeed, if you go back to Bridget. Is that a truth? I have just made a decision. I will work as an ambassador, improving relations between our people. Whether you are in Bridget or Fodlin, I will be there too. Then both places can move forward together in eternal friendship. We ought to join forces and make that a reality. Do you not agree? You have my gratitude, Ferdinand. All of it. I have loneliness, just like you. But your words gave me great happiness. Please do what you are saying, and be a bridge for Fodlin and Bridget. You can count on me. We will keep at it, and one day... Yes, one day, we will be seeing that future. <laughs> My princess is lovely. My princess is fair. She sings like cicadas in midsummer's air. Cicadas? Those noisy little bugs that swarm about, endlessly mingling with one another? Oh, uh, good point. I will revise. My princess is lovely. My princess is fair. She sings like a swallow in midsummer's air. Migrating birds. Never sticking around for long. Always off to find love somewhere else. Uh, no! Wh what I meant was... Uh... <sighs> oh, Ferdinand. You're just not yourself today. You don't seem focused. Your poetry... lacks poetry. Perhaps a break is in order. I would not dream of stopping now. This is my golden opportunity. Pardon me? We are finally alone. Just the two of us. Why, yes, we are, aren't we? You see, Manuela, I have long admired you. Is that a fact? I saw you perform countless times while you were with the opera company. Oh, I see. So what did you think? The figure you cut, that heartbreaking voice. I was mesmerized. That is why I am tongue-tied. I am nervous about speaking to you alone, after idolizing you for so long. There's no need to be nervous, Ferdinand. That songstress you recall is long gone. I get nervous too, you know. But I want you to feel relaxed around me. Understood? Yes, uh, <clears throat> uh, yes, I promise to try. You're really full of surprises, you know that? I assumed you'd be more interested in combat than the arts. Come and chat sometime? I'd love to hear more about how my performances mesmerized you. Hello, Constance. 
Greetings, Ferdinand. My condolences on your misfortune that our paths have crossed again. Oh, dear. I am not used to hearing you deprecate yourself like that. Never mind. Just listen. If it is an audience you require, I will endeavor to meet that need. When we last spoke, I was attempting to connect with you, to listen and show you some empathy. But I was so clumsy with my words that I came across as callous and conceited. I hurt you. I know. The notion that a noble of House Iyer could display arrogance is difficult to credit. That you even deign to speak to me is a testament to your humility. As grateful as I am for the honor, it would be best for us both if I take my leave. No, please, hear me out. Though your words chafed, I see now that they were perceptive. I was being arrogant. I tend to... overcompensate. Perhaps I make a fool of myself, bragging about my superiority to Edelgard. Now, with my father's fall from grace, I have been dropped to my knees, utterly humbled. I have heard and grieved for your predicament, but you must know that it is no reflection on your sterling quality, Ferdinand. Even in the face of such adversity, you never strayed from the correct path. If this was the right path, the wrong path hardly bears thinking about. Still, your kindness has eased my worries a bit. A wise noble once said that life is a series of peaks and valleys, but I have struggled to find the peaks. I was once pushed to the nadir of a valley, and have spent my days confined there ever since. There is little chance that I will ever return to the heights I once knew, but it will not be for lack of trying. Your persistence is admirable. You are too gracious. I see the highest of peaks on your own road. The way is steep, but not long. You will reach it yet. And if my words might reach the ears of a man who has attained such heights, perhaps one who has reached his summit might pull a climber up behind him? Such is my heart's desire, unspeakable though it may be. Hey, Petra. How's training going? It is going well. I am not having any troubles right now. Good, good. At least things haven't gotten worse, right? <laughs> so, did, uh, did you hear what happened the other day? The professor, really. Caspar. Oh, whoa! Uh, okay, there's no need for that. You are the son of my father's killer. That means I must be killing you and taking revenge. What? I thought you said it wasn't a big deal. We're not our parents and all that. Your optimism is not making sense. It is not possible that you are not having hatred for me. My father was killed. By the Empire. By your father. And so I will be impaling you on this blade to be satisfying a deep wish of mine. A deep wish? What are you talking about? I am talking about my wish. Of course... <sighs> I am also having another wish. An even deeper wish. I wish for you and I to keep being friends. To keep fighting and surviving together. When you are speaking of your father, it is with a proud smile that injures my heart. But that is only a small thing. You also are working harder than anyone I am knowing, so I can't bring myself to be killing you. I see. So you do hate me because of what happened, but you still want to be my friend? You haven't stabbed me yet, so you obviously want me to live more than you want me to die, I hope. That must be the truth. More than all of it. I am not wishing to be losing you. It would give me great sadness. Oh, okay, that's a relief. I don't want to lose you either, and I definitely don't want to fight you. To be honest, if things were the other way around, I don't think I'd be able to forgive you. I'd hate you, and I'd hate myself for feeling that way. Caspar. 
But you're not like that. You see me as your ally and your friend. You had the chance to kill me, but you used it to show me that you want me to live. You really are an incredible person, Petra. I want to be more like you. I want to prove that I'm a good friend. I promise, you won't regret letting me live. You have my gratitude for your understanding. Hearing your words gives me great happiness. I was always feeling a barrier between our hearts. I am sure I was also the one putting it there. But from now onward, I will be sharing all of my heart with you. My grief and anger, joy and love, all of it. I'd like that, Petra. From now on, we'll be more honest and open with each other. I never imagined I'd see you again. Indeed. Emil, I've missed you so much. How long has it been since we last spoke? Since you left House Bartels, I was eight. And just look at you now, all grown up. I notice that you still indulge in sweets. It makes me happy to see that you're still the same in some ways. Hmm. It has been some time since I've tasted such a thing. Well, of course. That's because this is a recipe only Mother and I know of. Oh no, you've gotten crumbs all over your face. Sit still while I wipe them off. Stop it. Oh, come on. Allow me to be your big sis. It won't hurt you to indulge me. Mercedes, the little brother you once loved, he is no longer here. It doesn't matter to me how you've changed. You will always be my baby brother. You are precious to both me and to Mother. Mother is well, I assume. She is very well. You should send her a letter. She'd be so thrilled. I suppose. Mother has always borne a deep regret over what happened. We should have brought you with us. We never intended to leave you alone with House Bartels. Perhaps not. But it was wise of Mother to have only taken you. As the heir, if she had taken me, Father would have searched relentlessly for us all. And had he found us, I feel certain he'd have killed you both. Yes, that's what Mother said too. He'd have done exactly that. You know, I've heard about what happened. About killing the family of House Bartels. And? Are you afraid of me? Or do you despise me? Neither of those. That isn't why I bring this up. I understand your reasons, but it's a terrible thing to take a life. You understood that even then. I've been waiting a very long time to ask you. Why did you do it? Why did you kill your father? Because I wanted to. I know you're avoiding my question. I can hear it in your voice. I won't ask any further if you don't want to tell me why. But just let me know if you ever feel ready to talk to me about it. Understood. The time may eventually come. Until then, I'll wait patiently. Phew, that about wraps it up for today's training. No thanks to a certain distraction. Professor Hanneman, I know you're there. It's extremely unsettling the way you're always staring like that. Oh, my apologies, child. I was trying to remain inconspicuous, not wanting to interrupt. Your half-hearted attempt to hide your weird staring only makes it weirder. Well, I must apologize. In the future, I shall do my staring out in the open. 
That might ease the weirdness, but it will continue to be extremely unsettling. I have no desire to disturb nor to disquiet you. But you are a most exquisite subject for my crest research. And you understand that the foundation of all research is observation. I understand well enough. And I'll do my best to ignore it. But in return... Do not worry. Your secret is safe with me. I have not spoken a word of your twin crests to anyone. Shh! Don't talk so loudly about it out here in the open! Pardon my excitement. I simply cannot let the opportunity to study such a miraculous subject go to waste. These awful crests may seem miraculous to you, but for me, they fall under the category of curse. I hope one day you will share more about your tragic origins, whenever you have the time to recount it. Your tale may contain valuable information. You are utterly lacking in empathy, you know that? Even if you spent your entire life observing me, you'd never understand my feelings and all I've been through. Now, if you'll excuse me. Ah, uh, I fear I may have made a misstep. I have no desire to trouble her, yet my research... <laughs> Oh my god, is the gauntlet over? Holy shit, that was way longer than I thought it was gonna be. Woo! It feels like uh, another lifetime. Okay, uh, that's gonna be the end of this one. Um, next video will be the uh, chapter 13 mission.